Remember when life was simple? You know, back before everything got so complicated? There were maybe three TV channels, and you had those rabbit ear thingies, and, and when the show you liked came on, you sat down and watched it. Now there are DVRs and DVDs and cable and satellite and everything streaming and processors and memory and power planes and tons of layers on our board and our simulation takes forever and, well, kind of wish I had those rabbit ears back. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, and today's complicated world, you need a way to make sure your system design is valid before you finish layout and start building those multi-layered boards. We need to be able to balance performance and accuracy in our simulation. My guest today is Parag Chaudhry from Cadence Design Systems, and we're going to talk about making our board life simple again with P-Spice. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about P-Spice from EMA. Hi Parag, thank you so much for joining me today. Great to be here. So PCB design has really become system design these days, hasn't it? Now, Cadence has a lot of tools for system designers. How do the board design tools fit into that picture? Cadence has a macro level system design strategy and PSPICE is a component of that macro level system strategy. The goal of PSPICE is to enable design and implementation of smart products on PCB. And in this process, it basically interacts with IC design process. It is able to drive from a system design of a PCB. It can take a block which can drive IC as well as it can also drive a PCB implementation. Got it. So that makes sense. Now, before we dive into the details of PSPICE, what are the trends you're seeing these days in board-based system design? So on PCB, there is a trend for driving for lower power and higher reliability. So if you look at medical electronics, handheld devices, automotive designs, they work in an environment which has a lot of vibrations, right? Dust. So because of that environment, there's a continuous trend to get all that functionality integrated into single device. So what you're seeing on PCB is more and more large pin count devices. The second thing which is happening in PCB, which is very, very critical is a lot of it is becoming software control. Software control is coming in because it's easier to design products, give different variants. And because of digital technology and software control, the complex control algorithms can be easily implemented. Like for example, drive by wire on automotives, right? Or you look at internet of things, they're all about processor plus communication and sensors. So all of them require a lot of software control inside them. According to one study, embedded software is actually doubling every 10 months. So what you're seeing on PCB is a lot of devices which are becoming bigger and bigger, more functionality, and with software content on them. Now, it seems to me like those trends might cause some issues with the traditional approach to simulation. Do they? On PCB side, yes. If you look at PCB traditional simulation, PCB simulation was basically targeted at discrete devices or basic mixed signal devices, and it did not incorporate large devices. But as more and more functionality is moving over into these programmable devices, right, it's creating a challenge. That means people now need to start looking at how to simulate. Users now want a simulation environment that's going to include mixed signal control system, right, which is implemented with a software algorithm inside these programmable devices. So if you look at in traditional PCB simulation, you could take a SPICE model, you could take a couple of mixed signal models, and you could simulate it. But now when you start having these big devices with software control, it's going to require more than that. You cannot go into an RTL level simulation because RTL level simulation, the RTL is going to be so huge, it's not going to simulate on your PC. I don't think there is any hardware which is going to simulate multiple chip level RTLs that are all there on PCB in one single device. It's going to cost you millions of dollars worth of equipment to do that. So the only solution is to go over to the system models. So what happens is when you go to system models, it presents a different set of challenges. That means now you're going to have a PCB design which you need to simulate, which has a system model, it has mixed signal model and SPICE models, where traditionally there were largely SPICE models with a few mixed signal models. So now the scope is 
more levels of abstractions need to be supported in that simulation. Software needs to simulate in that block. So to be able to achieve all of this together into one simulation is creating significant amount of challenges for PCB system design. Okay, so looking at PSPY specifically, what are you doing to address the modeling side of this? To address the modeling side of it, what PSPYS has added support is for system level models in PSPYS. So in PSPYS earlier, we were only focused on discrete devices and basic mixed signal devices models. Over recent time, what we have added is added support for system C, C, and the higher level abstraction models. This allows you to actually co-simulate or rather simulate devices of different level of abstraction in one schematic canvas. So you mentioned mixed signal models there. Tell me more about that. How do mixed signal models work? Mixed signal models, Amelia, is basically using the technology which we have had over the last two decades, well-established technology for that matter. PSPICE has two kernels, tightly integrated, which is an event solver as well as an analog solver built into the PSPICE simulator. What we do is we extend those solvers to be able to support system level models. And these event solver and analog model equations are really the backbone of our system level extension models extensions that we have implemented. Okay, so now if you're dealing with an embedded system with software and so forth, how does that model extend to handle that? If you look at our event solver, right, it has a PCB orientation to it. It has basically three different components that solver has, right? It has behavior logic and it has pin to pin and constraint models and IO models around it. What we do is we kind of extend that with uh, C system C and similar way for our analog partition also we extend it with different modeling languages and having these modeling languages basically allow the models embedded in each of the blocks to be accelerated by taking a higher level of abstraction in terms of modeling a chip. Okay, so how are all these models, constraints and perimeters organized? So as I said, PSPICE is a PCB-oriented simulator, right? When we say PCB-oriented simulator, it basically means the models are not expected to be built up bottom-up and everything to be implemented inside a model. For example, you could have a basic functional model and then you can add timing to it and then you can add constraints to it, IO to it. So PSPICE allows you to add that information on top of existing defined model block or it could be implemented inside the model definition itself. Both those possibilities do exist with it, primarily because you could have a function model which is describing just the behavior, and when you go from chip A to chip B, you are just changing the timing or you're just exploring a solution with different timing aspects, and you can add those things on top. Or you could have a very detailed model provided to you by the IC vendor, which can actually incorporate the entire behavior inside the model. So all those possibilities are being taken care of when you look at designing a digital block model for PSPICE PCB. Now, let's say I have a software algorithm I want to simulate in this virtual environment. How is that set up exactly? So when do you take a software algorithm inside an IC? So there are different ways you could do it. And in PSPICE, what it would really mean is you can take the software algorithm, let it drive the pins of a block, which translates to an easy implementation that does not depend upon the processor A to processor B or device A to device B. The challenge here is, in a lot of cases, you would want, let's say, instruction set simulation to happen to be implementing that software algorithm. You would convert your software algorithm into instruction sets. Then you would have an interfacing instruction set simulator inside it. So it's not that PSPICE would prevent you to do that. Sure, you can integrate an instruction set simulator into a block inside PSPICE and simulate the software algorithm embedded inside it. However, it's much simpler at an early stage to really go and take the software algorithm and just let it drive the IO. Because then if you're changing your device from device A to device B, you are not getting impacted. So software algorithm as a simulation which drives the IO of a PSPICE device is the simplest and the easiest method to get it up and running. Okay, so can you walk me through an example of that? Sure. One of the simplest examples is we have a software-controlled pulse width modulator in a power supply, and you want to basically drive it with some software control embedded software. So what you would do is you would take PSPICE, create a block, 
and that block or symbol what you're seeing on the schematic you would associate it with a software component and software component has a simplistic picture and it can be more complex than this this is a very simplistic picture of what you can achieve at a very quick and high level but you can make it as detailed as you want so it's get interface execute your software algorithm put the interface back and the get and set interfaces interact with the rest of the simulation. So what you have is a software algorithm getting simulated as part of a block inside PSPICE. Okay, so if I already have working hardware for a piece in my system, is there a way to use that hardware in my virtual platform to speed things up and let me see better how the system will work with that actual hardware? True. So what you could do is the same extensions that what you're seeing here could be extended to hardware blocks. So the software algorithm could be actually be used to interface with a real hardware. A lot of our customers would like to interface with a real hardware to be able to get the exact behavior. In that case, the software logic which you were seeing an algorithm is just an interface to a hardware and the whole solution works in the similar manner. All right, so walk me back to my system level schematic and, and tell me how this all fits in together. So what I just talked to you about was how we were extending each of those interfaces inside a block. And what is the important piece is that everything is working inside a block. So you could have a schematic, for example, a single schematic of PSPICE, which traditionally was PSPICE macro model, but now each of those blocks could be targeted to different levels of abstraction. For example, one of them could be running a system C algorithm, other could be running a simple C algorithm around it. One could be analog behavioral model, Model, other could be tied in with hardware loop. So this entire schematic working at different levels of abstraction could be simulating together in PSPICE. All right, so it seems like everything revolves around this mixed signal interface you were describing earlier. Yes, and I think you got the point right. The catch here is to make sure that your interface stays mixed signal. And the reason why PSPICE insists on that is to maintain the integrity of PCB level simulation. So think about it like this. When you're simulating PCBs, you don't want the interface to go at higher level of abstraction than at mixed signal level. The reason is if it goes higher between the two chips, then all your downstream flows would start having a problem. That means it will become difficult for you to take the design into implementation. Keeping the interfaces at mixed signal and only accelerating models inside each of those blocks allows you to actually simulate the PCB at a higher speed while ensuring that all your downstream flows like PCB layout, advanced analysis, CIS flows, integrity, signal integrity, power integrity, all those flows remain intact. That is one of the reasons why PSPICE purposely restricts system level model exploration is embedded inside a block rather than going out at interface levels. Okay, so if my company is designing our own ICs and packages, does this play nicely with other Cadence solutions in those areas? Yes, it's not just if you were a company who was doing IC and PCB, it is also that you were getting models from an IC design company. What typically happens is that the system design is being done is as part of a design exploration and some of that may be targeted to drive an IC implementation. And what Cadence supports is as part of its macro level system strategy is that PSPICE netlist or a portion of PSPICE netlist, whatever the user needs, can be taken into the IC design process to drive IC implementation. And similarly, once the IC implementation has been completed, one of the levels of abstractions could be brought in back into PCB design implementation, which is basically saying that the model now coming out of IC design is more accurate as compared to the system level model that was done in the earlier. So what you're seeing is, how PCB design is moving from a system design which is being used to drive an IC implementation to a level where it's actually being used to verify a PCB implementation, right? Where you are actually using it to ensure that the IC is coming out with more details like IO characteristics or timing characteristics are more accurate and now the PCB simulation is working with more details. And this is what I was talking earlier when I said PSPICE is a component of Cadence system solution, right? The macro level strategy is in place and that says that we are not just looking at the PCB solution alone, we are looking at the whole system, whether you, it is all being done in one company or it's being done across different companies, the solution that exists 
is that it goes from chip to package to board. So whether you are working with RCAD PSPICE in a pure design, lightweight architectural exploration, or you're looking in an enterprise where you are going into a full implementation verification of a PCB system with all validations and verifications, advanced analysis, SI analysis that's happening, or you may be interacting with the IC solution. For example, a lot of places, let's take automotive companies, there's a lot of exchange of information that happens in, from different companies who basically collaborate to build that entire complicated system. So our chip package board solution actually allows us to integrate that whole strategy of how that communication happens at a more reliable platform. And what we are providing is the component which is going to work with PCB and well integrate into the chip package board level strategy which Cadence has come out with. Okay, Parag, we've covered a lot here today. Can you give me a little wrap up of what your key points are? Sure. The way I would look at it, there's a significant amount of explosion in interconnected systems, right? Whether you're looking at IoT, healthcare, automotive, whichever electronics you really want to look at, it's all about power, it's all about miniaturization, it's all about embedded software, interconnected systems from an analog control. There's a lot of mixed signal control coming in. We are seeing a lot of places where a system design of PSPICE is being used to target and drive a cadence solution of IC design implementation. So all of these trends that what we are seeing as electronic systems is being addressed by what cadence macular level strategy. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Parag. Thank you for having me. Before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about EMA's P-SPICE. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the On Demand section of eejournal.com or check out YouTube, keyword, eejournal. <laughs>